Hi, I'm Diego Alonso from DiegoAlonsoMusic.com. Today I'm going to talk about the bar or the barre technique for the guitar. This video is part two of a two-part series where I go over the bar chords. In part one, I talked about the setup or mechanics for the bar. I talked about the two-string and the three-string bar chords. If you're new to guitar and haven't played any kind of bar chords before or having trouble with the two or three-string bar chords, I recommend checking out video one, which I have in the description below uh, first before checking out this video, part two. If you can already play bar chords well, or at least two and three string bar chords, and you are more advanced, then this video is going to cover the four, five, and six string bar chords, which are more nuanced and require a little bit more body posture and some more tricks to make sure that they work well, again, without destroying your hands. So like I did in the first video, in this video, I want to mention some key points that, I, again, I think you should really keep in mind before and during your exercises for your practice of bar chords. So point number one, is to make sure that you're pressing as lightly as possible and you're only pressing the strings necessary at any given moment, okay? Point number two is to keep your left wrist only slightly curved or you can even keep it straight. You don't want to have it curved too much, right? Curving it too much is gonna compress the median nerve which runs in here, can lead to uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, you can mess up the tendons as well, tendonitis, all of the bad things we want to avoid. Uh, the next thing is take lots of breaks. I recommend, again, taking a break after, after every one to two repetitions, right? Take your hands completely off the guitar, rest, relax before doing your next repetition. If you feel any pain, stop playing immediately, figure out what went, what's going on, what caused the pain, and, and if you can find a solution, try to implement your solution. If the pain is gone, you're good to go. If it's still there, do a little more problem solving to figure it out. If you can't figure it out, you might need to take a day completely off from the bar chords at least, and if you can, find a teacher to help you figure out what is going on. The next thing to keep in mind is that we're going to use our body and our arm movement a lot with bars. It's not just the finger, right? We're going to lean a lot. We're going to lift so the elbow, kick the elbow in, move the wrist forward. So uh, keep an eye on that. In addition to taking lots of micro breaks, keep your repetitions low. I really recommend no more than three in general. And if you need maybe one or two extras, that's fine. But try, try not to go past five repetitions. That, that's that's going to uh, potentially cause problems. Uh, the next thing is to make sure that you push yourself just outside your comfort zone. Not too much. You want to make sure that the exercise is challenging but doable, not challenging so that you have to struggle through it physically in your straining. That's not good. That means you're too far beyond your comfort zone. So if you're straining, take it down a level. Mental effort is great. Lots of mental effort. That means you're concentrating a lot. That's good, but you don't want too much physical effort. Uh, the next thing is, Remember that our goal with these exercises is to be able to play bar chords in our music. So I don't recommend doing these bar chords all the time. Sorry, these bar exercises all the time. I recommend developing them, making sure you can do them well, and then finding music that has bars in them, music that you like that maybe you're already having trouble with, and practicing your bars in that vein. And the last point is, again, another point that I mentioned in part one. That is to please not try all of these bar exercises in one sitting. That's going to be a disaster for your hands and for your memorization. That's going to lead to injury guaranteed. So what I recommend doing is taking one of these exercises and doing two to three sets of that particular exercise in one practice session for the day. It could even be two days or three days until you feel comfortable with this exercise. So the best way to do it is to interleave it or mix it in with uh, two to four different unrelated, so no bar related exercises that you're working on. For example, you can go bar, arpeggio, scales, thumb, so right thumb. And again, the bar, arpeggio, scales, thumb. Two to three sets. That's going to be a perfect schedule for um, memorization, technical development, and of course, injury prevention. So with that said, let's jump into exercise uh, number one for today, which is going to be the four string bar chord. This is gonna be a lot more nuanced and, and involve a lot more movement than the previous chords in, in video number one, which is the two and three string bar chords. Uh, four string bar chords are gonna obviously require more strings and it's a different kind of finger pressure that, uh, that we didn't cover in the other one. So if I cover, for example, fifth, fifth uh, fret one, two, three, four, five, strings one, two, three, and four, again, one being the string closer to the ground. When I cover those four strings, the fourth string is right below the tip and the first string is between the first and the second knuckle. I'm just moving this finger out of the way so you can kind of see where that lines up. See if you can see it in the camera. Uh, that way you should be able to, right? Okay, so remember the difference between the three and two and three, three string bar chords? I was doing that with the four string. I want to have my finger a little bit straighter. And now I need to redirect my pressure in a little bit differently. So if I play my open strings, a four, sorry, four, three, two, one, and then bar, four, three, two, one. If 
many of you may have this happen. Right, that first string is gonna be muted or you might get a kind of an ugly buzz. What we need to do now is think about the pressure between those knuckles. So push down on this part of the finger evenly. You don't wanna push more here than more here. So evenly, so getting that mute, just push down a little bit more with that center of the finger and you're gonna get the clean note. So let's try this three times. So open, four, three, two, one, bar, right? I made a mistake, I didn't, I was focusing too much here. So again, if you make this mistake, there wasn't enough pressure at the tip. So I'm gonna adjust my pressure and have my even bar. Again, open, bar, hold this position, relax the fingers. How's the wrist? How's the weight? Are you relaxed here? Okay, think about minimum fretting pressure. Last time, open, again, relax the fingers, relax the wrist. Once again, move this all over the fretboard. You can do multiple strings. So for example, if I wanted to do six, five, four, three. Okay, it's the same mechanism. It's gonna feel a little bit weird and you might get that, that same problem. So you wanna think about the pressure in between the knuckles right where that third string is. Oh, you hear that, heard that buzz, right? So I'm gonna think about redirecting. Okay, this bar requires a little bit more force than the two and three string bar chords. Let's try strings five, four, three, and two. Did you get string two to sound or was it muted, All right? If it's muted, hold it, redirect your pressure here. A little bit less here, a little bit more there. Let's try it again, one last time. Okay, good, that's 4.1. I wanna stop here to remind you that you can also lean forward if you feel like your left wrist is bending too much. Now that we're getting to more of these advanced chords, four, five, and six string bar chords, you're gonna find that you know you, you might have a tendency or a desire to bend your wrist to get these chords down. You wanna to try to avoid this bend as much as possible. So a, a way to counteract that, again, as a reminder, tuck the guitar in, this part of the guitar into your hip if you're a right leg player, and lean forward so that your left wrist straightens out a bit. You can see how that happened there. So if I lean back, I'm pressing a full bar chord here, six string bar chord, if I lean forward, that helps eliminate some of that flexion. So keep that in mind. Once again, if you are a left leg player, having the neck higher up also helps eliminate some of that flexion. So you can consider doing that. Even if you're a right leg player, just raising the neck a little bit or pushing the neck away from you also helps uh, eliminate some of that flexion. Okay, so just please keep that in mind. 4.2, the same idea plus another finger. I'm just gonna show you the one extra finger on the, third, on the fourth string remembering that you should move these around. So you can do bar string one, bar string two, bar string three, bar string four. Again, you don't need to do all of these in one sitting, but it's definitely recommended that you cover all of these permutations. So I'll just show you on the fourth string. Bar, second finger, fourth string. Lift the second finger. Bar, open. Bar, third finger, fourth string, seventh fret. Lift. Open, fourth finger, fourth string, eighth fret. Once again, you can do that on all the other strings if needed. Now exercise 4.3 is the bar plus another finger simultaneously. I'm gonna do this one now on my first string. It's a little different, a little more challenging. Uh, I'm still sticking to strings one through uh, four. However, you should do this on five through two, six through three, okay? Um, so here we go, bar and the second finger on the first string, lift the second finger, third finger, let's try this on strings five through two, let's do this now on the third string. Fourth finger, again. Okay, same idea, you do that with six, five, four, and three, and you can pick any of those strings, okay? 4.4, bar with a finger simultaneously, simultaneously plus another finger. So this time I'm gonna go through six, five, four, and three. If 
For example, it'll be open, bar and second finger, I'm going to do this on the fifth string, third finger on the fourth string, lift the third finger. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing again, but this time, fourth finger on the fourth string. Okay, you can probably already feel that this is getting more complicated. That last one that I did, you're going to feel it's going to require a little bit more effort. So hold this position, make sure you're using arm weight, right, and pressure. So if I do my third finger, I'll do the sixth string, second finger on the fifth string, lift. I'm going to do third finger, fourth finger on my fourth string, lift, fourth finger same place, third finger on my fifth string. You get the idea. Again, I'm just sort of making up these permutations. 4.5 bar and two fingers simultaneously. So let's go back to strings one, two, three, and four. Fingers two and three. Two is gonna be on the third string, sixth fret. Three is gonna be on the first string, sixth fret. Sounds like this. Four, three, two, one. And lift three. Fourth finger on the seventh fret, first string. Okay, beautiful sounds, right? Let's do the third finger. It's going to be three and two. Let's do three on the third string, two on the second string. Each finger gets its own fret. Lift two. Three and four. Let's put two on the first string. Now let's do four and two. Four will be on the third string and two will be on the second. Three on the first string. Beautiful sounds, right? Four and three, three on the second. Second finger. Okay, you get the idea. Again, lots of permutations all over the place, different sets of strings. Last one, 4.7, is bar and three fingers simultaneously. So for example, and I can do this, All right? Lift four, so two, three, and four in a diagonal, right? They don't have to be in a diagonal. You can put them on different frets. So for example, like this. Okay, maybe two, four, and three. So I'm gonna set this up like this, two, four, and three. And these, lift up three. Okay, four, three, and two, like that. Again, I'm just making up permutations. Once again, practice these in all sets of strings, all uh, across various different frets. Okay, look for that clean sound. Remember to be relaxed, press as little as possible, relax the fingers, straight wrists, use weight and pressure. Right? Keep in mind, I'm doing all of these exercises in one shot for this video. You don't want to do that. Just pick one of these and practice it for the day, and then you can do the next one the next day and so forth. Exercise five is going to be the five string bar chord. Now we're getting pretty complex here, but it's going to be the same idea as the four string bar chords. Now if we do strings, uh, five strings, one, two, three, four, and five, here's my placement. Fifth string is right below the tip. The first string is right around the second knuckle, the middle knuckle of the finger. So you can see that here. Okay, notice the shape of the finger. Right, slightly curved when I do these strings. If I move up and do six, five, four, and three, three and two, sorry, six, five, four, three, two, notice my finger's a little bit straighter. Now, this is what can commonly happen. That's very common. Very common. Why is that happening? Because for one reason, the strings are between the knuckles, which are kind of pushing these strings away, and there's a little more space underneath. So what we want to do is redirect the pressure into this part of the finger, like we talked about for the four string bars. Press here, release a little bit of pressure here. Let's see if that works. Oh, second string stills. I need to focus a little more on this knuckle. A little more. There we go, I got it clean. Does it require more force? Yes, it does, a little bit. Okay, 
There's another quick adjustment that we can do, which is moving the finger vertically up or down in about maybe a millimeter, a couple millimeters uh, distance, maybe even a centimeter. Uh, this is gonna depend on your finger length, your knuckle size. Um, I have large knuckles, so this is particularly challenging for me. So one of the ways that I resolve this is by moving my finger up about a millimeter. I don't have to press so hard. So you have to move, maybe you have to move down. Maybe it's fine, but this vertical movement is very helpful. It's very individual, so try to find a position that works for you, okay? So I'm gonna do now six, five, four, three, and two, open, bar. If you're getting buzz, see if you can do some vertical adjustments to clean that up. Remember to pause the video if needed. 5.2, bar, plus a finger and then remove a finger. So I'm gonna do now uh, one, through, one through five. Bar. And let's put the second finger on the third string. Release the second finger. Okay, nice sound. Let's do the same string, third finger. Next fret over. Fourth finger, same string, next fret over. More challenging. Hold this position. Notice how my finger is facing. It's not perpendicular. It's angled that way to my left toward the headstock. This is natural. I'm not forcing it that way. It's just natural. I don't want this perpendicular. No perpendicular. So it should be natural. Okay. And then, and again, you can do that on every string all over the fretboard. 5.3. Bar and a finger at the same time, plus the addition of a next of a second finger afterwards. So let's do this on the same set of strings, one through five. We're gonna plant the second finger on the second string. Let's try that. Then we'll add the third finger on the first string. Lift the third finger. Let's do the same thing, but we're gonna add the fourth finger on the second on the first string. Fourth finger, one fret up. Okay, oh, I hear that buzz, right? Redirect my pressure here. Remember to stop if you hear a mistake and fix the mistake before moving forward. Release the hands, okay? So again, all of those permutations all over the place. The next one, we're gonna do a bar plus two fingers simultaneously. So let's, mm, let's stick to one through five. Now we're gonna do, let's do fingers two on the second string and three on the fourth string. Each finger gets its own fret, sounds like this. Okay, this is a nice D minor seven chord, right? Release the third finger. Release, let's do the fourth finger on the third string, eighth fret. Lift the fourth finger. Discover a lot of beautiful sounds doing this. Release. Let's do fingers three and four. Let's do three on the third string, four on the second. Lift three. And you get the idea. We would add different permutations of fingers all over the place. Next exercise is bar with two fingers simultaneously plus the addition of a next one. So for example, I'm gonna to stick to strings one through five. Fourth finger. Okay, let's do the bar and we're gonna do the third finger on the fourth string, uh, seventh fret, fourth finger on the second string, seventh fret. And then we're gonna add the second finger on the sixth fret. You'll see it slowly, just like this. Lift the second finger. Again, you can experiment. They don't, they don't have to be these shapes. You can do something like this. A great part of developing your technique and practice is to be very creative. It's great to have all these exercises the way I'm laying them out and somebody else lays them out, but it's really gonna be much more fun and, and you're gonna learn faster if you create your own variation. So really think about different variations that you can create. Look for beautiful chord sounds, chords that you like, interesting sounds. That's gonna make your learning process uh, much faster, okay? 
last exercise, bar plus three fingers, and then we remove a finger. So for example, I'm gonna do all of these, but let's do this now on six, five, four, three, and two. So. Got the buzz there, I gotta adjust. For me, it's my finger height. All right, and I'm gonna lift my fourth finger. Okay, got the buzz again, I gotta clean that up. Okay, so always clean up your mistakes. Let's do four, three, and two like this. Okay, this may be challenging, but let's give it a shot. Lift up four. Okay, so that's exercise five, five string bars. Exercise six is gonna be very similar to exercise five. So now we're covering all strings, obviously. So for example, okay, that's 5.1. For 5.2, we're gonna do our bar chord, add a finger, then remove the finger, just like before. Third finger, remove the third finger. Okay, relax that for a second. We're gonna get some interesting sounds. For 6.3, we're going to add the bar plus one finger at the same time. Then we're gonna add another finger and remove that finger. Looks like this. A little bit slower. Remember to lean forward, third finger. Remove the third finger. Okay, release, relax. finger. One note. Be careful here with your third finger. You want to make sure that your third finger is not, uh, I don't know if you can see this in the camera. I'll move my second finger just so you can see it. You want, you want it to be curved like this. You don't want a flat knuckle. That's not good. You can, you, that can hurt your, you can hurt your finger quite easily. You don't hyperextend. Keep a nice curl, not curl, but slight curve in the finger, all right, uh, so that you're using more leverage in the finger, all right. The next one, we're gonna add the bar and two fingers simultaneously. Okay. Let's do another one that's just a tiny bit more complicated. This is gonna be an A sus4 chord. Uh, so we're gonna play the bar and then fingers two and three like we did for the minor chord before, A minor chord. And then we're gonna add four underneath that on the uh, third string, seventh fret. So with this one, this one is gonna obligate your wrist to flex more, so really lean a lot more forward to eliminate some of that flexion, add pressure and weight, all right? So don't just, don't just clamp down on that, that's gonna, or you're gonna hurt yourself. So lean forward quite a bit. You can see I'm doing that in the camera. Just to set up. So here it is, bar plus two and three. Fourth finger on the third string, seventh fret. Here's my sus4, and I lift the four finger. Okay, so nice uh, different sounds there. Here's another one that's uh, really nice for flamenco guitar. Four, lift four. Okay, really nice, uh, beautiful sounds. Another flamenco chord, which is common, this add flat two chord. Let's do A, um, we're gonna do this A7 chord that we did earlier, two and three, or three and two, sorry. And we're gonna add four to the fourth string, so it looks like this. Fourth finger. Lift four. Now that we've covered the four, five, and six string bar chords, you can combine those with the two and three string bar chords that I mentioned in video one to have really a complete set of bar exercises at your disposal. And if you wanna continue improving your guitar technique, then you're really gonna to wanna to check out the next video that I have linked on the screen right here. Thanks again and see you over there.